السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين فقد قال الله تعالى في كلامه المجيد والفرقان الحميد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين صدق الله العظيم My dear brothers and sisters uh, boys and girls uh, Alhamdulillah we are coming to almost towards the end of the explanation of Surah Fatiha uh, we have been running it for last uh, about three months or more three to four months uh, so uh, alhamdulillah we have gone through in detail every aspect of all the verses of surah fatiha including even the uh, even the explanation on on each of the words as well and their background the stories so at this stage last week we were talking about you know ihdina siratul mustaqim that is about the divine guidance on siratul mustaqim and in there uh, we were talking about seven points uh, that need to be adhered to in order to uh, get to the siratul mustaqim and to stay on the path of siratul mustaqim okay just only to recall you know if all of you can remember number one is you need to ask yourselves who is the guidance for and then number two is through what we talked about that and then number three is where to follow the guidance it is in in this dunya in this world uh, to get the result in the akhirah and number four is guidance to reach what guidance to basically basically reach jannah jannatul firdaus inshallah in the akhara number five is to how many to how many paths uh in the you know allah is guiding towards or through quran allah said there are two ways i have given uh one is good another is bad if it choose to stay on the path of good which is siratul mustaqim you're going to end up in jannatul firdaus inshallah or Jannah and if you take the other part the bad path or uh, the the path of evil uh, you are going to enter into hellfire in the Akhara number six we, we talked about different types of you know just we wanted to understand what are the you know what is that path and what are the other alternatives and uh, all other alternatives will have the risk of entering hellfire other than the straight path and then we talked about is getting guidance easy it it is yes and no uh, if we get uh, the help of Allah Sunnah Ta'ala it's going to be easy but in order to do that we need to send some signal um, uh, you know to Allah Sunnah Ta'ala uh, some some qualities we need to attain and by which Allah is going to be merciful on us to give, give us the guidance, inshallah. Now we are going to talk about the last point, that is the point number seven, or the question that we need to ask is, can we stay on the path of guidance alone? Suppose we have got the guidance, okay? Is, is that it? Uh, like, okay, once we are in, onto the path, um, is it for, there for granted? It is not. As Allah is saying, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu taqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. That, O you who believed, O you who have claimed to have believed, uh, fear Allah as he should be feared, and do not die in the state when you are not a Muslim. That means, even after you have declared shahada, you have become a believer, then you continue to the path of taqwa became a muttaqi still there is no guarantee that you are going to stay on the path of islam going to remain as muslim when you are going to die 
So that's why there is no guarantee. But in order to achieve that, Allah has given the prescription, uh, which is, you know, I recited in front of you this uh, very familiar, familiar verse that is 102 uh, Surah Al-Imran, uh, chapter number three. Uh, and then following verse 103, I'm going to deliberately uh, not touch upon that in the presentation. Just I uh, mention it. Uh, you know, some of you may be very familiar with that verse. Because this verse is very long, you might get bored. So that's why I'm going to just only stick to this. That is, hold on to the rope of Allah, that is, Quran, Islam. Mm, uh, and the belief of Allah uh, in Jama, uh, you know, collectively. You cannot hold on to the rope of Allah alone. If you do, you're going to fall off. And when you fall, you're going to fall into the hellfire. Now, so, and then uh, even staying in Jama is not easy. That's why Allah is saying when you get, collect, you know, what is it called? Get together. There will be difficulty among each other. So that's why Allah is warning you that be sure, uh, keep an eye on the issue that so that you don't get divided. You don't get divided. Okay. So that's the, uh, uh, that's the main message of Quran uh, that, you know, we cannot stay alone and we, we have to get together in a collective form. And then we have to help each other to do good and to forbid evil. You know, you know, a very known surah, surah al-asr, uh, Allah said uh, that they advise each other to the truth, that is Islam. And when they are on the path of Islam, uh, sometimes it may get difficult. Then they advise each other to have patience. Okay. So, I love this verse when I want to explain uh, this issue that uh, where is it coming from, you know, that to stay on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala collectively, not alone. It is coming from Surah Kahf, chapter number 18, verse number 28. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded, you know, to Rasulullah sallam, okay? It's not me and you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Rasulullah uh, uh, you know, through this verse. Okay. Uh, okay, by, by now I, I can see uh, um, there is something, someone, you know, Ibrahim, his nickname, he has given Bob Marley. Uh, I think one day I said I love Bob Marley. It is not the Bob Marley I, <laughs> I indicated. Actually, I indicated Ibrahim. I love Ibrahim. Uh, so uh, somebody actually, uh, mm, you know, brought this to my notice that, you know, you said <laughs> you love Bob Marley. No, I don't. Uh, the, the, the word, uh, the, the name Bob Marley, no, I, I don't. Uh, but I meant about uh, Ibrahim behind it, who, he, who is hiding behind this name. Okay, anyway, <laughs> let's uh, focus on the discussion, inshallah. Right. Uh, so the verse is wasbir nafsaka ma'al ladina yad'una rabbahum bil ghadati wal ashiy yuriduna wajhahu wa la ta'du aynaka anhum turidu zinata al hayat al dunya wa la tut'i man aqfalna qalbahu an dhikrina wa attaba'a hawahu wa kana amruhu furuta in this verse it was a direct command to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this carries a very heavy weight eh, among the verses of quran Okay, even uh, more than the verse that already I mentioned, because that was uh, more uh, kind of a general verse to everybody. But this is very, this was very specific to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That one day Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in, in his hujra uh, or in his house. You know, those of you have been to Medina Masjid al Nawabi. Uh, I, I'm sure you have seen, you know, the, the cover or the grave of Rasulullah uh, you know, just uh, beside the Rawzatum min Riyadil Jannah. So Rasulullah was there. 
sitting there uh, and this verse was revealed and the this verse has talked about you know those two two of the things that you have to do and the two of the things you shouldn't okay uh, what is it wasbir you can see it starts with sabr so that means uh, something allah is going to, uh, allah is going to command rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam which is going to be difficult to adhere to that's why he started with uh, the observance of patience wasbir nafsak o prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you keep yourself patient by being with those ma'alladhina with those who are they number one the quality the possesses yad'una rabbahum bil ghadati wal ashiyi number one who call upon their lord in the morning and in the evening you can see bil ghadati wal ashiyi in the morning and in the evening then what do they want that is the number two seeking his satisfaction yuriduna wajahahu you know this wajahahu means actually face of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically they hope for allah to turn his faces towards them and 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 start looking at them if allah uh, you know turns his face towards me alhamdulillah that is going to be my achievement that is my success right so that's why they you know they look for actually we can say that it is they look for the satisfaction of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rasul allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that you shouldn't be with those who possess the other two uh, bad qualities you know bad characteristics or bad attributes that who are they and let not your eyes pass beyond them this is the second message you know those who uh do these two things right they call uh, uh, their lord uh, morning and evening uh, w- in order to gain the satisfaction of their lord uh so allah is saying that don't let your eyes pass beyond them desiring adornments of the worldly life uh, okay so basically if you see that these people don't have the richness don't have the wealth Uh, don't ignore them simply be with them even if you don't like them if you find them uh, find these two qualities in them you be with them all right and the but do not obey those people whose heart we have made heedless of our remembrance who are ghafil you know wala tutiman aghfalan aghfalna qalbahu the kalb of those who uh, you know whose calves are uh, whose hearts are basically ghafil or heedless of the remembrance and zikrina remembrance of us all right and who follows his desire and the number two is whose affair is evil in neglect all right uh, so do not follow them no matter how much status they see uh, you see in them or maybe they are very uh, uh, powerful with authority uh, don't don't be with them okay uh, yes can you uh, mute please okay so may i ask you all to mute yeah inshallah uh, when you enter okay so that's the Mm, uh, uh, that's the basic command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so got this command okay uh, he he immediately came out of his house and uh, uh, you know he started looking for such group of people you know you can see Allah is mentioning uh, about those people in plural not in uh, not in singular form so allah is not saying that stay with that person who is calling his lord a uh, day and night allah, allah is not saying that allah is saying that stay with those people who are collectively calling their uh, lord huh Uh, to in order to gain the satisfaction of their lord so basically those who are in jama collectively they are trying that's why you see 
you know, all the best of the things uh, in Islam are in Jama, like five times prayer. Uh, it is fard upon uh, us, particularly the men, to pray five times a day uh, in Jama, in the masjid, uh, because Allah loves uh, the ibadah, Allah loves to see his slaves doing the ibadah together, not alone, not alone. Okay. So then Rasulullah started trying to find, uh, find out such group of people and at some point in the desert he found a group of people sitting together and one, one person uh, is, is saying something and when he went close to them he saw that he found that this man was talking about Allah SWT and Islam and then he sat down there subhanallah so, and he didn't stop there after he sat down he said that I, uh, I am thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created such people within my ummah who Allah has commanded me to be with. Subhanallah. So that means those people who run this kind of Islamic majlis, say for example, we have been running it every Sunday, isn't it? And we are coming together just only to discuss about Allah. Actually, Allah is referring to the, our type of people, Alhamdulillah. Alright? So what they're doing is, they are collectively sitting together, being together, just to remember Allah, to call Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala for gaining the satisfaction of Allah. So, us in this circle today, we fall into that category. So, uh, you know, then he sat down and he, he was saying, I'm, I'm thankful to Allah, Alhamdulillah. So that means, you know, people like ourselves who run the circles, the classes, they fall into that category. So Alhamdulillah, we all fall into this category. So now, so that means we have to try to stay together. And if we do, then only we would be able to be on the path of Allah. Uh, inshallah, we, we would be able to be steadfast on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why you'll see you know, it started from the beginning of the human creation, Adam alayhi sallam, and it continued through all the prophets. You cannot give any example of any prophet who didn't call for jama, who didn't call for becoming united, who, uh, who just went alone. No, they quickly, the moment they got the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they came down to their kaum, to their nation, to their community and started giving the message and tried to gather together, you know, some of the people who would believe in their messages, you know. So it started, as I said, Adam Salam, when Allah created Adam Salam, he was walking inside uh, Jannah uh, with all the ni'mah, all the blessings, subhanAllah, in Jannah. Huh? No worries there, just all happy, all happy. Still, he was not feeling good. He was feeling bored. He was saying that, okay, wallah, I need jama. I need company, right? I need someone to be with, to be united with. And then Allah accepted his dua. Allah has given him Hawa alayhi sallam. You know, uh, that is an, another story. So we don't want to go get into detail of that. So, you know, this jama, uh, you know, being on the path of Allah, Together, it started in Jannah. It is a journey started from Jannah. Okay, so that's why we need to be on this practice, on this habit, and that will lead us back to, inshallah, Jannah, Jannah and Jannah al -Firdaus. If we look at Nuh alayhi sallam, again Nuh alayhi sallam was calling people to, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in, in Quran, Allah mentioned that, you know, more than 950 years, Nuh alayhi sallam gave da'wah. And in his jama, together, only 40 pairs or 80 people joined, uh, you know, came onto the boat of Nuh alayhi sallam. Okay? So, somehow, unless it's un and until we, we get on to, uh, uh, we, we get on to the jama called by the prophets or the preachers, you know, uh, you know, we, we are not safe. We are not safe. We are in risk. Okay. Uh, 
So that's why, you know, like the only those people who got onto the boat in the unity or in the Jama uh, uh, with Nuh Salam, only they were saved. But rest of the people were drowned by the great severe flood. Right. And there was a man who used to be uh, praying day and night, but alone. He wouldn't call anybody. Yeah? He was an Abed. OK, so he would just continue to worship Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Uh, but not letting other people know, not calling other people to do the same thing. So he was doing alone. Uh, so then when angels saw that man drowning, they called Allah and said, Oh Allah, what do you think about this man? Should we not try to save him because he, we saw him praying to you, worshipping you? Then Allah said, No, let him drown as well because... He was trying to go to Jannah alone. He was praying alone. Right. So that means he, he is actually contradicting this command uh, that I mentioned already. Yeah. Um, uh, they, you know, they they do it together collectively in Jama. OK. So so then uh, basically that man uh, was drowned in the flood, flood gone. Right. So that's why if you want to. Uh, stay alive on the path of Allah uh, or path of Siratul Mustaqim. There is no way other than being in a collective uh, Jama'ah, inshallah, you know, being united. E even you think about Ibrahim Ismail alayhi sallam. Look, when Ibrahim alayhi sallam built Kaaba, the greatest of the, uh, what is it called? Monument, all right? Uh, the, the place for our worship yeah uh, ibrahim alayhi salam didn't do it alone he did it with, uh, with his son can you please uh, uh, can you please mute please uh, okay uh, please uh, mute yourself and uh, okay. So if you only ask question, if you want to ask question only, you unmute yourself and ask the question. Uh, otherwise, please uh, mute it, inshallah. Okay. Uh, so so then Ibrahim alayhi salam, look, in order to build Kaaba, uh, he needed Jama. He needed to be united with his son, the greatest of two prophets, Ibrahim alayhi salam and Islam, Ismail alayhi salam. Together they build Kaaba. And then this is the verse. This is the dua. Uh, three sets of dua. Basically, Ibrahim and Ismail did. You'll see, not only they were doing it together, they were you know making dua to allah for you know the the for their next generation to be in jama you know they were they were not saying that you know oh allah uh, just uh, send us someone uh, you know in our progeny you know in our next generation no uh, they were asking for a nation a group of people all right uh, so it is always collective so Rabbana, uh, you know, minna inna kanta samiul alim. Whenever you do any great thing, uh, you know, you definitely uh, follow Ibrahim alayhi salam saying this, Oh Allah, accept from us uh, that we have done. Okay. And then after that, they made this dua, subhanallah, this dua and the following dua that uh, that I'm going to mention, Rabbana wa ba'athfihim rasulam minhum. Okay. Uh, so, so these two verses, two du'as, they were making actually uh, in the tafsir it came that these du'a were meant to, uh, you know, du'a for Muhammad Sallallahu and his ummah, meaning us. You know, look what they did. Our Lord. They made these three du'as and make us Muslims in submission to you. So that means collectively between him and his son 
and from our descendants next generation a Muslim nation in submission to you and show us our rights this manasikana that is that is to do with the, the rights of Hajj effectively all the rituals of Hajj in how to do, perform Hajj and accept our repentance indeed you are the accepting us of repentance the merciful in the Kantatawabu Rahim then this great dua they made subhanallah uh, where not only Ibrahim alayhi salam asked for Rasulullah sallam but also he mentioned uh, you know send him with these four mission these are the mission prophetic mission right O our Lord and send among them a messenger from themselves who will what what they will do number one recite to them your verses yet no alayhim ayatihi ayatika then why you ali mumul kitaba teach them the book and wal hikmah al hikmah means the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi sallam okay some people tend to misunderstand al hikmah means you know just whatever you think the best know the wisdom so this is referring to actually book quran uh, and this is the referring to sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu because he is the the best uh, uh, best uh, you know the person of best wisdom whatever he did whichever that is best so that's why al hikmah is the sunnah of rasulullah Sallam, please note it down. This is very important. Uh, you know, Al Hikma is not just only uh, being politically right, politically correct. No, it has to be according to what Rasulullah Sallam did. Okay, and then the fourth one is why you zakki him. Do the he will do the taskia of his people. He will purify them. So these are the four. Mission Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is no more with us. Uh, he died. Uh, he uh, so, but this mission is still alive until Tiyama. And who are going to, uh, you know, carry this mission is us, the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam on his behalf. And that's what we are doing. Subhanallah. Look what I am doing here, uh, as as your teacher. Right? I am reciting. This is the. You know, sometimes you may feel that, you know, why uh, uh, Dr. Imran is always reciting Quran. Why doesn't he say uh, something from himself? No, no, no. You can see all four things. Nothing will, is from my whim or my will, uh, my wishes. All right. Uh, so it has to be the first one is yet no matter what. Yet no alayhim ayatihi. Yet no alayhim ayatika. All right. So recite from Quran. And you have to try to learn to answer any question whatsoever you face in your life. You have to try to learn to answer from Quran. Subhanallah, any question, if you try, if you make it a habit, you will find answer to any question you can think of in your life. Uh, you will find it in, in Quran. And let me give you a, an interesting example. A, an atheist was debating with a, a Muslim uh, and then at some point he asked the Muslim uh, Muslim brother uh, that you know you say that Quran has got all the solution all the answers can you answer to this question of mine and then he said okay go on then he said I want to listen to it very interesting and funny I want to bake a cake Tell me the answer. How can I bake a cake from Quran? You know, give me the answer from Quran. So this Muslim brother, he was a little bit um, perplexed, you know, uh, and he said, this is this is one of the best strategies of Dawah. Whenever you cannot figure out from Quran or Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu just say that, please give me some time. I'm going to find it out. And that's what he did. He took his time and then came back and saying that, yes, I found it. There is an answer in Quran. There is a verse. So what is it saying? He is saying that Quran is telling you to go to a baker and ask him to teach you how to bake a cake. 
Then this man think, uh, this man was thinking, you know, was telling that how is it possible this exact this sentence is in Quran? How do you get it? Then he said, so how Allah that um, uh, Allahu Akbar. Um, uh, uh, how do I, uh, you know, why am I not remembering it? Uh, that Fasalu Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I've got it. Okay. Fasalu Ahla Zikir in Kundum La Ta'alamun. That Quran is saying, ask the one who knows if you do not know. So that means you do not know how to bake a cake. So go to a baker because he knows how to bake a cake. You can see the answer is there. So if you try to make it a habit to answer to any question, you will find uh, a verse from Quran inevitably. I have uh, you know, experienced it in my life, throughout my life. Alhamdulillah, I try. You know, that's why this is the number one mission. Recite to them your verses, no matter what. Uh, and then teach them the book, uh, not only recite, but also teach them the book. And that's what I'm trying to do here. And, the, and from the Sunnah of Rasulullah, not only just only mention the Quran and uh, there are a group of people, please write it down uh, just to warn you. Is, you know, nowadays there is a group called Ahlul Quran. They want to deny the Sunnah of Rasulullah. So they say that, OK, we don't want to believe in Hadith, Na'udhu Billah, just only we want to follow the Quran. No, 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 you cannot. La ilaha, you have to believe in both. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That there is no deity to be worshipped except Allah and Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is his messenger. So that means you have to follow the path of Allah by the way shown by Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's why these two are there, OK? And finally, purifying them. So you can see all it is plural. There is no singular, uh, you know, um, singular person there. OK, so uh, the person who is saying it, he is in Jama with his son and he is asking for a, a Jama, you know, Rasulullah and his Ummah or the nation. OK, so the next look, this is very important. In our days, we see that there is so much of evil going on uh, throughout the world in different countries. You know, if you th even if we, if we can, uh, if we want to refer to this recent, uh, you know, mm, uh, this racist, uh, you know, attack by the police on uh, who was the guy? George Floyd, is it? Adil or Fuad are there? Muhammad? Uh, why am I? Forgetting yeah, it. it was George Floyd. George Floyd. Thank you, Ibrahim. Okay, so so that means you know any evil that you, that you see in the in the world in the country, huh? What you need to do is you need to you cannot actually protest it alone. You cannot fight it alone. You have to take some people with you. So that's why I'm saying it is necessary to stay on the path, you know, together. It is necessary to fight the evil as well. You know, the greatest of the evil we can think of on the earth was, uh, you know, Pharaoh, right? One of the greatest of the evil, right? Who claimed himself to be Ana Rabbukumul Ala. You know, uh, I am not only I am the Lord, I am the greatest of the Lord, Nauzubillah, he said. He declared and he, uh, you know, claimed. That Pharaoh, so powerful and so heinous, you know, a tyrant he was, you yeah? So that man, when Allah Taala called Musa Alayhi to go to that man, Pharaoh, to give dawah of Allah, Musa Alayhi became really scared. He didn't want to go alone. That is the message that I'm trying to give you. Idhab ila Fir'auna innahu taga. Okay? So, O oh Musa, go to Fir'aun. Verily he is in Tagut. That is the transgression. All right? Then immediately, the, 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 his chest got squeezed out of fear. And that's why he said, Rabbi Shrahli Sadri, Wayasirli Amri, Wahlul Uqdatamil Nisani, Yafkahu Kauli. So he was asking for three things. Oh Allah, please, Rabbi Shrahli Sadri, expand for me my chest. 
basically give me the courage because I got scared. If I go to Pharaoh, he might kill me. All right? He might persecute me. So, O oh Allah, expand my chest so that I feel courage. I become bold enough. Number two is, O oh Allah, ease for me my task of da'wah that you have given me now to give da'wah to Pharaoh. And then, Oh Allah, remove, uh, uh, remove all the difficulty from my tongue. All right? Okay, I, I think that this English is uh, a bit uh, a difficult one. Untie the knot. Uh, and the simple uh, uh, translation would be, and remove any difficulty from my tongue. Why? Yafkahu kauli. So that they may understand my speech. So that I can speak clearly. Right? I can explain clearly. Subhanallah. Bihamdi. Okay? And so Allah accepted it. Then still he is scared. He is saying, now he is calling for jama. He is asking for jama. He is asking for, you know, being united with other person, similar, like-minded. Okay? He is saying, you can see, subhanallah. Wajali wazir. You can see wazir. We know sometimes we, we are familiar with this word. Wazir. All right? A minister. All right? Or a, a, a representative. Or a company. All right? Uh, who will represent me. Wajali wazira min ahli. Uh, from my ahol, from my family, give me a minister, a company, Harun, and he even mentioned the name, Harun, his cousin, right? Who is Ahi, his brother, my brother. Ishdud bihi azri. Why? These are the two things. That is the benefit of staying in Jama'ah. Subhanallah, Mahamdi. That to increase through him by strength. So that, you know, sometimes it happens. That when, I, when we get together, there are people who want to actually stab from your back, you know, bad bite in your absence, character assassinate in your absence. That is not the purpose of being in Jama'ah. Okay, Ishdud bihi azri. So that they, he bolsters my strength, right? When, we, when I go to Firaun, you know, talk about Allah SWT, if Firaun is going to beat me or hit me, so that... My company Harun can defend me, you know, strengthen me. And number two is, another one is, wa ashri kufi amri to for him to share my task, because you know, no matter how capable you are, you cannot do it alone, right? Yeah, you may be a rich person, you may have money, but we may not have the strength or. You may be a pahlawan, you know, like a very good wrestler. You may not have money. So two of you have to come together. Right? So that what you can do is we may exalt you much and we may remember you much. So Allah said, subhanallah, Allah was so generous and so happy and Allah used to love Musa alayhi sallam so much that qala qad utita su'ulaka Ya Musa, Allahu Akbar. Indeed, you are of us ever seeing when he said, eh, he, Allah in reply said, you have been granted all your requests. O Musa alayhi sallam. Qala qad utita su'laka. You have been granted all your, uh, what is it called? All your requests that you have uh, done this sawal or you have asked for. Subhanallah wa hamdi. So you can see, if you want to give da'wah, if you want to stay on the path of Allah, eh? if you want to stay on the path of Siratul Mustaqim, you cannot do it alone. Even the prophets couldn't. Even the prophets were scared of doing it alone. All right? They were asking for company. Uh, you saw Ibrahim Salam was Ismail with Ismail Not you know it is such a big task. Subhanallah, you know two prophets had to come together. Allahu Akbar. Yeah, not just only two men, two prophets, mightiest of the prophets. Yeah, okay. So when uh, after saying all this, okay, Alhamdulillah. I think if I um, uh, maybe stop here, what we see uh, is from the lives of prophets. Uh, you know uh, that we need to stay on the path of Siratul Mustaqim together, uh, not alone. Together, it has to be in Jama'ah. 
uh, may Allah give us the tawfiq to stay in jama together and what if if we find any difficulty among ourselves so that we don't uh, we don't uh, run away from each other right uh, we don't become angry or upset on our brother you know if we do that then we might have to face the consequence of Yunus sallallahu alaihi wasallam because Yunus sallallahu alaihi wasallam was quite upset with the, with his kaum with his nation and then he was he was trying to run away i think i have relayed uh, this story with you and you all are familiar with that story as well all right so we must not we must not try to run away from our brothers because maybe for some reason we are upset with them allah is saying that stay with your brothers stay with your brothers and sisters you know uh, that the brothers for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allahu akbar so this is very important al mu'minuna ikhwa that believers are brothers uh, brethren right and what they do even it is better than the blood brother okay and fa aslihu bayna akhawaykum what they do they do salah among each other um, uh, you know if there is any dispute uh, they try to solve it uh, among themselves easily without making it any complication okay so alhamdulillah uh, i think uh, it, uh, if there is any question i will stop here for 5 minutes uh, Uh, and then maybe we'll continue for the sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim anybody any question on it that is this i, I talked about this path of jamaa you know one may think you know what which jamaa i should uh, i should be involved with i see so many organizations islamic organizations islamic centers around me th- throughout the country which uh, should i uh, join uh, with a local uh, small organization or a maybe big national organization or a maybe uh, some international organization what do i do you know is is, is do you think uh, you know i'm trying to create a question for you uh, anybody uh, what do you think is is it a good question to deal with hmm Faik Fadil or uh, huh? Abdullah? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a very important question because especially we being young people, we are sometimes we, we don't know how to go ahead with uh, joining a group or we don't know how to determine whether a group is good or not. Alhamdulillah. Yes, it is. It is a very important question. Subhanallah. Because there are so many groups are there. and they are fighting with each other which is haram right uh, then the general people our youth our next generation even the elders sometimes get confused where to go to which masjid to go to you know say for example i live just literally behind the mosque and opposite of the road there is another mosque subhanallah literally few steps right uh, So, and one mosque is called Pakistani mosque, another mosque is called Bengali mosque, one mosque is called Salafi mosque, Ahle Hadith mosque, another mosque is called Tablighi Dabindi mosque. Subhanallah. But the point is, mosque is mosque. So we need, uh, you know, five times prayer. If we pray, we'll be fine. Alhamdulillah. So I'm not going to talk about unity or disunity today. That's a completely different topic. just only this question that i raised and abdullah was saying as well it is necessary which jama number 1 is you need to try to find out one jama it doesn't matter whether it's a small one or a big one at least you need to stay with at least one jama but how to find that out you have to look for all these four missions yatlu alayhi ma yatihi wa yuz wa yuallimuhum al kitaba wal hikma wa yuzakkihim these four missions right huh? so whether they refer to quran and the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam whether they continue to get the guidance from quran by reciting quran and whether they try to purify themselves constantly 
meaning through what I was so bil hak, what I was so sabr. If you see a group, you know, they are talking about Islam, but they are heedless about praying five times a day in Jama'ah. Don't go for that. Right? If you see that there's somewhere a group of people who are very serious about praying uh, five times a day in Jama'ah, but they ignore about you know eradic trying to eradicate evil that is going on in the society. So there comes another level of questions you need to think about. Ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhawna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. These th three things, whether they constantly do that they enjoy whatever is good ma'ruf and forbid evil and they constantly renew their iman remind each other to renew their iman they don't stay there just only by saying la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah once sallallahu alaihi wasallam right so whether you find that quality as i said first of all whether they are doing all four missions and whether they are doing all the you know, doing doing the good deeds, advising each other to do good deed, uh, uh, helping each other to do good deed, enjoining each other in good deeds. And at the same time, when they see any evil social ills that is going on in the society, in the community, in the country, they become, they raise their voice. Huh? But they have to do it in a civilized manner. Islam is a deen of civilization, you know, civilized manner. Islam cannot... Uh, Islam doesn't propagate any chaos or any anarchism, all right? Uh, it has to, you have to follow the rules of the country, law of the country. Islam is the most law-abiding deen, okay? So whoever wants to break the law, if you see a group of people, they are trying to break the law, don't go there, to there. So that is not for you. That is not the jama for you. So you figure that out. Now, once you have chosen that jama, what about the other jama or other organizations? You continue to be with that jama, but at the same time, if there is a local mosque, there is a local community association, huh, and they are asking for doing something good, you join them. That help each other, to, uh, you know, to do uh, bir the good good deeds and what taqwa and the deeds of God consciousness, and do not help each other to do ism or odwan. That means anything to do with devil or uh, you know sin. And anything to anything that may create enmity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nauzubillah. So that's the thing uh, we have to follow. Uh, inshallah, stay with a jama'ah, no matter small or big, local or national, to safeguard yourself, to safeguard your iman, taqwa, tawakkul. You know, if you are with some other people, they will always tell you, Oh, Abdullah. You should pray five times a day. Uh, you know, you, you shouldn't do this. You should do that. Always, friends, Rasulullah Sallallahu said, "Arrijalu ala dini khalili." The a man is always in on the deen of his friends. So you choose the friends and be with them in jama, in jama. And the second thing is, at the same time, any other group calling for good deeds, you enjoy and fighting for evil, uh, fighting against evil, you join with them. Say, for example, anti-racism, huh? uh, you know, Islamophobia, uh, you join with them, right? Um, if there is a protest, if there is a, uh, uh, what is it called, a, a, a seminar, right? You join with them, right? Uh, so you support them. Hmm. So these are the, these are the things, uh, you know, this is a big question, you know, one needs to understand uh, actually, okay. And the third thing one needs to do is do not backbite each other within the jama you are in or do not say anything bad against the jama you are not in. You can think of this. I am in Manchester. 
Some of you are in London. I, I can see that some are, some are from Nottingham as well, right? Say, I have set off to go to London from Manchester by car. So I have taken the motorway M1. And when I am on to M1, you will see that there are lanes, three, four, la uh, four lanes on your side. And in each lane, there are so many cars going towards London. If you think about Manchester is your position and the London is metaphorically say that is the Jannah that you want to achieve or, or even you want to arrive at. All right. Uh, the, the, your destiny effectively. All right. So on the path, all the cars are fine. Right. So what they do, they do not want to collide with each other. They follow the rules. They stay on the lanes. They don't want to actually hit one another because if they do, eh, both of them will crash and then none of them will be able to reach London. Right. So exactly the same thing. If we think about this path, Saratul Mustaqim, it is the path of Jannah and in there, you are in one jama'ah, this is one car. I am in another jama'ah, this is another car. As long as all of us are on that siratul mustaqim of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, what we should do is, we should make sure that we don't hit each other. We stay on the lane. Maybe you are driving Rolls Royce. I am driving Toyota. Another one is driving Ferrari. No problem. So now comes the quality of the organization or the quality of the car. If you want to go fast, you need to take the faster car. So that means the faster organization, more sharper organization. If you want to go to Jannah faster. If you want to get to Jannah safe, you need to take a safe Jama, which, you know, ticks all the characteristics, all the qualities, all the missions that I have talked about. Was it, was it, was it okay, Abdullah? Any, yeah. Huh? Yeah, it was okay. Yeah, this, this, this example that I mentioned, you know, many people, they tend to be very upset that, why well, you're not in my jama, so you're gone. No, I don't want to talk to you in, in Alila. No, no, no. Every jama has got strengths and the weaknesses. Just only check whether they are on the path of Kalima. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Nothing more, nothing less. We do not have to, it, we do not have the obligation to believe in anybody who is alive. Whether he is my leader or my teacher or my father, whoever he is, or my sheikh, big scholar. No. Even we do not need to believe in Abu Bakr. Do we have to? You know, our kalima stops there. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. So I said, finished. We do not need to say La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Abu Bakr Khalifa de Rasulullah. We don't need to say that. Yeah. Our belief is period just only for Allah and Rasulullah. Yes, we respect Abu Bakr because he is number one in the ummah. Right? We respect all the Khulafai Rashidin, you know, Abu Bakr, Umar, Osman, Ali, everybody. We respect all the uh, ulama -i Kiram. We respect all the Ayma Mustahideen. We respect all the Imams, like Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, Imam Humble, eh? all the Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahimullah, Imam Ghazali, Rahimullah, Imam, uh, you know, Imam Ibn Qayyim al Zawziya, Rahimullah. Even more recent ones, yeah? Shah Wali Ullah Dehlawi Rahimullah, Mujad Dal Fasani Rahimullah, Shaykh Ahmad Sarhandi, Maududi Rahimullah, yeah? So Hassan Al Banna Rahimullah. So many, you know, you can think about, you know, say Shaykh Isu Al Kardavi, uh, who is, is still alive, yeah? Um, so we, we respect all of them. Shaykh bin Baz Rahimullah, Shaykh Usaimin Rahimullah. We, 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 we respect all of them, but none of them are part of our Iman. Only Allah and Rasulullah are part of our Iman. And the rest of the people, if they command us to do something 
according to Allah and Rasul وسلم, we follow them because we respect them and follow them because they command or tell us eh, inform us to basically be on the path of Allah uh, shown by Rasulullah sallallahu that's why that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul wa uli al-amri minkum fa in tanaza'tum fi shay'in farudduhu ila Allah wa Rasul in kuntum tu'minuna billahi wal yawm al-akhir zalika khairu wa ahsan ta'wila that what Allah is saying that obey Allah unconditionally wa ati'u Rasul obey Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam unconditionally wa uli al-amri minkum and obey your leaders from among you conditionally upon the first two that's why when i have recited uh, you, you are you are listening to me isn't it atiu allah wa atiu rasul then allah didn't say wa atiu ul ul amr this atir is the itaat or the obedience so allah have withdrawn this word huh allah said atiu allah wa atiu rasul then when it comes to following the leaders or the imams or the shuyuks hmm? Allah say wa ulil amri minkum say this atir is not there why because this is conditional upon yes you follow your leaders you follow your responsible people you follow your father in the family you follow your mom huh? but conditional on if they are telling you to do according to Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then Allah is even expanding it, you know. fi shay'in rasul. Again, Allah is saying, if there is any dispute arises among you between two organizations, between two persons in the same organization, right? Between two nations, between two groups, between two kaum, yeah, between two communities, you know, if at any time any dispute arises. Turn your faces to Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Meaning, again, go back to Quran and Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu hmm? Alaihi uh, Wasallam. Farudduhu ila Allah wa Rasul. In kuntum If you really believed in Allah and the consequence of Akhirah, then definitely, 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 do not turn your faces to an alim or a, a teacher or a leader without uh, the condition of turning your faces to Quran and Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Clear? So basic bottom line is we must not fight among e each other. And but that is the ironical thing happening in the Muslim Ummah. Instead of being united, we tend to fight with each other. Whereas we are we are supposed to fight the evil of the society together. We are supposed to fight the poverty, deprivation, unemployment. You know, uh, we are supposed to fight against corruption that is going on in the society. We are supposed to fight together uh, to the this uh, this evil in the society. Uh, rather, what we do is we become weak by fighting among each other. And saying that I am better than you, you, uh, uh, he is better than the, uh, the other person, isn't it? Inshallah. So, Jazakumullah uh, khair. Maybe we stop here. Uh, uh, I will stay for another five minutes, inshallah. If you want to ask anything out of what I said so far. So, basic bottom line is we have to stay together. In the family, father, mother, son, daughter, together. And then among the neighborhood few families together and then in the community uh, you know some group of people together and then they help each other to do good they help each other to do ibadah if there is no mosque you establish mosque together but if there is already a mosque don't try to create another mosque to create fitna no so be with them wasbir 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 have patience be with them with sabr Inshallah. Jazakumullah khair.
سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله